This month's Q&A is all about wigs. So a lot of my advice is gonna be coming to you as a beginner and what just kind of I have found works out best for me. But fear not, if you did have a question that I am not able to answer at this stage of my wig career, I will recommend someone else's channel or another video that I have found helpful. To All right, let's get started. The first category is where to buy wigs. So my wig shop of choice is Arda Wigs. Arda has a really great selection, not only of styles of wigs, but of colors. And I actually bought the color wheel from Arda, so this is their entire selection of colors. I, I don't even know how many there are, there's just a bunch. Now going to Epic Cosplay, I feel like them and Arda are really extremely similar, so you can bounce back and forth between those two companies and still get a great wig. The next site that I do go to is Gothic Lolita Wigs. The prices of Gothic Lolita Wigs are a bit higher than both Epic Cosplay or Arda, but Gothic Lolita Wigs are extremely full, bouncy, they have lots of fibers, lots of wefts. You will be paying more, but it's worth it because the wigs are really, really nice. The other places that I do buy wigs are pretty much Amazon, eBay, or any of those really cheap Asian cosplay websites. So the wig I'm wearing right now is actually from a site called SammyDress.com. I find the quality of these wigs to be pretty lackluster. You can see this one is extremely shiny. It's a little small for my head, but I will admit that I do have a lot of hair and a rather big head, so I kind of find that finding wigs to fit my head is hard in general, so I can't put that against them. But all in all, websites like eBay, Amazon, or other Asian cosplay websites like Sammy Dress, you will get a very low quality wig, but for a really cheap price. And I'm talking like $5 to $15 to $30, it doesn't matter, but you can find them extremely cheap. The downside to cheap wigs is that they're extremely thin. You can see there's not much fiber to this. They tend to look really cheap. You can see how shiny and kind of frizzy. Can you see like it's frizzy? It's just, when you get a cheap wig, it looks like a cheap wig. Second category, wearing and storing. Comfort wise, the better quality wig, the more comfortable it is to wear. I find that cheaper wigs, cheaper fibers tend to get itchy more and I also tend to find that they're actually a little bit smaller and give me headaches if I wear them for a longer amount of time. So as for wearing wigs, um, a lot of people asked about how to fit your hair into a wig. So one, I already made a video about this, it's how I fit my hair into my Harley hood or under a wig. You can go and check out that video, I will also link it in the description below. I'm bald! So really quickly, this is how I fit my hair under a wig. One, I had the patience this time to French braid my hair into four sections, especially because my hair is pretty thick and pretty long. Four French braids helps to space it out even more evenly than just two. So what I'll do is I'll pretty much just take my braids and put them in a loose bun on the back of my head. And then put my wig cap on my other hand and just kind of transfer the bun into that hand and pull it onto my head. Hiya! Sometimes I will pin down my braids, but it kind of depends on what wig I'm wearing and how comfortable it is. Usually the less bobby pins, the more comfortable I am. And then you can layer them as you see fit to get your hair as flat as you possibly can on your head. I put it over the back of my head and just slip it on the front and I adjust it and pull it over my entire wig cap until it fits snugly. Man, how does Ariel deal with this in her face? And your wig is on. As for storing my wigs, I keep them in one of those fabric shoe racks. I just hang it up in my costume closet and there they stay organized and clean. Next category is a brief, brief overview of how to style a wig. First off, for combing, you're gonna want a wide toothed comb. To brush, you want to start at the bottom, make sure there's no tangles and slowly work your way up the wig. And especially when you're brushing out a new wig, fibers are going to fall out. It's just gonna happen. They're gonna be the most 
loose of the fibers when you first get it. So don't worry if some fibers fall out every once in a while, it's gonna happen. I will also use a smaller tooth comb. This is mainly used for teasing. Uh, mine is metal and it has another point on the tip, so that way I can section off the hair really easily. And then for cutting the wigs, any really cheap pair of hair cutting scissors will work. So for hardcore teasing and styling, a lot of people recommend the Got To Be Freeze Spray, and it works great, it works Almost the best, I want to say, for making really heavy duty spikes or a lot of volume. Personally, I hate the way it smells. So I use the got to be this one, Too Sexy, Body 10. This is the one I prefer, but the other one people say works better. Finally, for keeping a wig smooth and less frizzy and less likely to get tangled, I use a olive oil spray, and this is definitely for real hair. It is not a synthetic product, but I do find that just kind of misting this over my wigs before I wear them the day of, especially if they're really long, kind of keeps them from getting as tangled and as frizzy as if I wouldn't use it. And then for heat styling, this means using a curling iron, a straightening iron, a curling wand, anything with heat on your wigs. If your wig says that it is heat resistant, then you can do whatever you want to it. If it does not say heat resistant, you cannot use heat on your wig, period. I'm watching you. Now, if you are looking to style an extreme spiky anime style wig, this is not your tutorial. Personally, I have never done a really extreme spiky wig, so I cannot help you but I will list you some cool tutorials in the description below. So there are a few questions about brushing out a curly wig and restyling a curly wig. For the most part, again, if it's heat resistant, you can just recurl it with a curling wand. Then to brush out a curly wig, I highly recommend not to if you can avoid it, but if you do, take them curl by curl. Take your time, section out a curl, start to brush it out, starting at the bottom and moving your way up. You should be able to brush it out, but it's a pain to do with curly wigs. I call this my Merida wig, but I actually wore it for Hawk Girl. Next category is washing wigs. Personally, I don't wash my wigs very often. I find that usually my wig caps keep my wigs pretty clean, but eventually you will have to wash your wig if you wear it a lot. If you have a really styled wig, really curly wig, that you want it to hold its curl, you want to use cold water. Anything else, you can use room temperature to warm water. In a nutshell, you fill a sink, you put in your soap or your fabric softener, whatever you want, you wash your wig, you rinse your wig, and then you lay it out to dry. This wig I have worn probably six or seven times during photo shoots, conventions, it probably has glitter all up in it and makeup, I have never washed it. Why? Because I don't want to. Have I ever brushed it? No! <laughs> Brushing this would be a nightmare. This was also a cheap eBay wig. I got it for like $5. I'm not gonna go through the trouble of brushing it. I'm just gonna buy a new one. But if you have a better quality wig, it's gonna be easier to brush than this cheapy $5 one. The next category is about altering wigs. One of the questions I got that I put into this category is how to make a wig bigger. One of the quickest solutions is try to get your hair to fit flatter against your head, thus saving you more space and making your wig fit more comfortably. But as for making wigs bigger, it's kind of like trying to make clothes bigger. It just really doesn't work. The last thing I can recommend to you is I don't pull the bottom all the way down over my wig cap. I kind of like rest it a little bit above. I think I'm doing that with this wig, if you can tell. See how it's not actually over my entire ball of hair? But when I flatten it down and straighten it down, you can't really tell. So even most short wigs, like the one I'm wearing, will still have enough length in the back to cover your exposed wig cap or a little bit of your hair. I've done it, other people probably do it, but that's what I do to a lot of my wigs that fit me kind of small. The next question is how to make cheap wigs less shiny. I've seen a few tutorials how to do this. I will link those in the description below. One of the most common things is to wash it with fabric softener. That tends to dull it down. If you want a wig that looks really good, 
then buy a better quality wig. The next question I got was how to make a thin wig look more full. One thing, you can always tease your wig a little bit. You know how to tease hair, you do the same thing to wigs to kind of make it look more full. The other option is to buy additional wefts for the wig and sew them in. These are wig wefts, they're essentially just a really long string of hair and you just attach these into your existing wig. But again, if you're fighting the shininess or the flatness of a really cheap wig, sometimes you're better off just buying the more expensive wig and getting the better quality. Wow. You cannot tell I'm very passionate about my high quality wigs. This is one of my favorite wigs. Next category was traveling with wigs. If you are transporting really extremely styled wigs or storing really styled wigs for that case, you kind of do them the same way, you want to keep them on a wig head. So one of the best ways that I've seen and heard other people traveling with really styled wigs is to keep them on wig heads and keep them propped up in some way. Either put like your suitcases around them or I've seen someone actually make a wooden stand for their wig heads to be able to transport their really heavily styled wigs safely without ruining them. And that does go for more of like traveling in your car or on a bus or on a train. I don't know how you're gonna get them through the airport unless you wanna carry it. And lastly, just some random questions that did not fall into any category. One, where do I buy wig heads? I buy wig heads either online off places like Amazon, bleh, Amazon, 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 but I tend to buy mine at Michael's. This is my wig head. As you can see, she is wearing a lovely duct tape cap. This actually is padded with felt to measure the same size as my head. So I measured my head around this way as well as this way and kind of padded it up and built it up until it was the same size. Another question was what wig is the hardest for me to style and do I plan on doing really heavily styled wigs in the future? I have never styled a really intensely styled wig. I do plan on doing a few characters that have really heavily styled wigs actually really close in the future and when I do those wigs tutorials will go up as long as they come out looking like I want them to. I Which I hope they do. Very lastly I got a few questions about lace front wigs and I have never used a lace front wig or bought a lace front wig, so I can't give you any advice about them whatsoever. So that's it for this month's Q&A. Thank you again for submitting all your questions via Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye. He's really not liking wigs. He's too used to my normal hair. Yeah, the bird went to lunch halfway through this video. That's why he's not here. Ha ha. Ugh. I got it. Ooh, don't we look fancy? What's with anime characters and long bangs? I don't understand this. How is this functional? Tell me. <laughs>